how we can make a line follower using this core key which is basically a very good microcontroller based robot and it have got two wheels attached to a motor here powered by a battery it have got a LED matrix here it have got IR sensors at this point here So using these IR sensors, we make a line follower. So this is the program for sensor calibration. See, we are here, drag the flag and then a forever loop and say, and then you have to get the instruction, get value of IR sensor. Here in the drop down, you can mention, is it a right, right side sensor or it's a left side sensor. When you run the program, the uh, sprite will show the reading like this. and. Uh, here now I'll show you the quarky over the map, how the reading changes. So see we have got a quarky over here and this one is its right sensor. Okay, which I have tried to calibrate here. Okay, see at the moment the sensor is on the white. So the reading is below 100. Okay, now when I move the sensor, this one is right sensor, yeah. When I move the sensor towards the black line. The reading changes beyond 100, close to 1000, 1100, somewhere. Okay, so the right threshold that we can take here is greater than 100 or 200, whichever, but less than 1000 or 500. Yeah, so this is the threshold. Now we'll try to calibrate the other sensor, which is the left hand side sensor, which we can see over here. Okay, see. So from this drop down, no, I'll change this to left hand side. Okay. Now this program is to test the reading of the IR sensor in the quarky, which is on left hand side. Okay. Now I will rerun the program. So the one which was running, I'll stop it for the moment, and I'll run it again. Not running. So see that it, now it is calculating the reading on the other side. So now, now I'll focus on the quarky. Okay. So this one is the left hand side sensor here. Okay, now I'll move this sensor towards the black line to calibrate it. See, so now the sensor, which is this one, this sensor. Okay, this sensor now views the black line. And see the reading changes. Reading changes to see, how the reading goes above 100. Somewhere around more than 1000 also. Okay, but the same reading now, if I'm changing, just stay on the screen. When I change the reading to white, now see it goes to. So the reading is low on white, so this sensor works on negative logic. When it's getting more light, okay, it's getting more light, then it is then it is showing you lesser reading. Okay, the value of this uh, reflection it shows very less because it was on negative logic. Fine. But when it, it receives less light, the reading goes high. Okay, so it is inversion of uh, value we have to take into account while programming our line follower. Okay. As we have got two sensors on quality, one on the right hand side and the other on the left hand side, so logically 2 to the power of 2 will have 4 instructions. We have to put 4 if here, okay, and 4 such conditions we have to mention that what quality should do if any of these conditions occurs. Okay, one condition will be you know when both of these sensors. So, what we'll do first of all, uh, we'll dock condition wise, but then first we should duplicate this to. Make sure we have got four such instructions like this. Okay, so here we have got four. Now I'll do the manipulation, but I'll just make this thing ready so that I can you know, simply put them when it is ready inside. So I'll create duplicates like this, one after another. Now our first condition, let us say, will be when both of these, both of these are greater than. When the value of both of these is greater than 100 that means when both of them are on the black line because it core key see there is a white line and at times there are black lines also so why i'm taking this black line is into account because whenever core key reaches this point no it will start behaving weird okay so we need to mention what we should do when the core key reaches this particular spot Okay, so what we'll do, we'll mention it all like this over here. Then when Corky reaches this, okay, a 
condition when both of them is greater than 100 this is this condition like this okay I'll just put this key right sensor okay, this, and I'll just put it over here like this and make it right sensor now this is our condition which says when both of them is greater than 100 what you should do so we'll just we'll drag it from the center so that we should not lose it we will place it in an if position one of our if is ready for a time being i just corner this testing thing okay and then now we'll go for the next instruction so let us say next instruction is when both of them are on white that means both of them are less than 100 for less than we have there about this instruction so we'll duplicate this one and now we'll put it over just let us remove this one we'll use it later on okay because this and equation by using and is very obvious that you know we have got two sensors and uh, we are using both of them uh, because we are making a line follower if we are making an edge follower we can use one sensor also okay so here in this condition we talk of when the reading of both of the sensor is less than 100 watt the call key should do so we are flowing it like this when both are greater than 100 when both are less than 100 now we'll do the other thing when one is less than 100 another is greater than 100 other is greater than 100 but it's here uh, one and other means left and right sensors okay so the two other instructions that i will prepare will be like this only okay so one sensor i'll make greater than 100 other sensor i'll make less than 100 so in this case we are making the left one less than 100 and the right one greater than 100 and the other case we just invert it so whatever instructions we are having in this space here we can delete it later on no problem so because this is a set instruction already so we'll keep this side as left right okay and now we'll duplicate this one and we put it over here and instead of left right we'll just swap this we'll make it right and we'll make it left so now we have got an instruction which is for the other sensor. So when the left one is less than 100 and right one is greater than 100, left one greater than 100 and right one is less than 100, what should happen? Let us first program it for this one. Okay, so let us see our call key over here. So we are talking of the condition wherein, okay, the left one is greater than 100, that means the left one which is this one this side one okay it faces the black line what happens the reading goes more than 100 okay then this wheel which is the wheel on the right hand side this is the right hand side okay the wheel on the right hand side should start moving so that it can push it back to the line like this okay so will stop this wheel in this particular condition and will make this right hand side wheel move so that the call key catches the line back and it aligns back like this fine so now i'll come here and i'll look for the movement instruction in this list of instructions so here we'll go down and search for it we have a move instruction earlier uh, here we have to drag so if you see the plane on the left hand side no, here we, are, we have all the blocks listed okay in this section you have to go to this motor section okay so you drag it down because you know this in sprite in block palette you get different blocks and different colors are there and all functions are categorized in these block boxes only in these blocks only so for a motor you have this green color section when you get this instruction you have to drag this instruction and drop it over here like this now because we have got two motors one says left the other should say right okay so we have got the left and right set over here so first we mentioned that run left motor forward with a speed of 100 we can also change the speed uh, this will give this is 100% like you know the power load on the brick is 3.4 volts 
100 percent means it will give complete 100 percent 3.41 to the motor the highest speed you'll achieve but if you want the brake to run with a slow speed no you can just bring it down like this i'll prefer mentioning through keyboard 50 percent okay because i want it to walk slowly so that i can track the errors and i can fix it and it will give me time to observe that okay so we'll put it like this now what is the instruction says instruction says that when the left hand side sensor has the value greater than 100 that means it is facing the black line so the motor which is the wheel which is attached to this motor on the right hand side should move forward so here to make sure that it goes back to the straight line so here we on this right wheel we'll put the power as 100 and on this left we will put the power as zero make it zero like this so this means your left motor will stop and your right motor will start moving okay and the complete vice versa of this will do over here in the instruction wherein the right sensor has a value greater than 100 Okay, and the lab sensor is a value less than 100. In that case, we'll make this power okay, go 0 and this power go 50%. Okay, so when the sensor on the right is on the black line, the motor which is on the left hand side should start moving so that it can bring it back to the white line. Now I'll remove the clutter here, I'll just delete all this instruction by dragging it back to the block palette and I can just remove them like this so just to make space for my instructions to flow. All of these were bought from here, let me put back over here. This is something I like about it. it's quick and easy. Now let us see these two instructions which we have put here. The first one when it was facing the black horizontal line this one okay, here what we should do when it faces this line so let us see in this instruction set do we have any instruction like beep or something and we can make the motor keep moving straight or we can make it pause for one second and you know here we have got sound so let us say core key to play some sound when it senses that black bar. Okay. So we'll say let us just make it one detected. Okay. And drag it and put it over here. Okay. We want both the motors to, to run. Duplicate here. Okay, just put it for a moment over here. So let me complete the instruction. I'll go to control, take a weight of just take a weight of one second is good. Okay. So we'll just attach it over here. So it will it will play this sound for one second and then it will do this. So I want both the motor to keep moving with a speed of 50 when it faces this instruction. In any programming that it be quirky or any other programming we got to mention every particular condition which can occur which can possibly occur with the sensors so to make sure that you know, nothing is left out and any condition which can make the public feel blackout should not occur okay so that's why we are mentioning all the four possible conditions which can occur with two sensors in this particular bot and now only one remaining one is this one okay so for this one also what we should do so we'll simply put the forward instruction over here okay so this will make the bot move so now our uh, complete instruction set is ready now we have to put all of these inside a loop what we'll do, we'll just detach this and this loop generally is available here in control. So if you go to control, here you get a forever loop. You can either drag this loop also, you can simply put it like this. So this whole thing will come inside this forever loop like this. Okay. 
whatever instruction we were using for reading this so i'll just delete it for now okay and instead of putting you know just uh, this when the flag is clicked so this is a live mode operation we are we don't want the live mode operation we want the program to be permanently transferred to the brick so that we can run it offline also okay so we'll choose a block which can make it possible how we make this program so once we are done uh, we need to set but at what event the program should start so go to the core key section and select this block which is here at the top of this when core key start up drag it and place it like this okay so this will say that entire program is made like this now you will see it will start displaying the code also over here okay it will start displaying the code over here like this now we are supposed to upload it so we'll select this upload code button to upload the program before doing that we need to select the port so we'll clear here and we'll because the port is already connected it is connected okay and we'll connect the port again like this now it is connected now i'll click on upload the code like this Python will start uploading the code to the code in this section. Sometimes it happens that you know using this round block, your Corgi may not work. So you have to use this this kind of block, you know, where you use this kind of block which is located over here, on this pointed block. Okay, so this, this block Corgi start working. So if you face the problem using the round block, then you should replace your uh, round block with this uh, type of pointed blocks like this. So if this was left, then simply place it over here like this. Just remove one of them to show that you know if there is an alternate also to make it work. Like this. Okay, so this was left. We should make this one right. Now the last one also will replace. So here we should have right and left. So we can duplicate it right from here like this. Duplicate this and place it over here. And this is left. We will duplicate this one. Which one was right? Which one was left? Okay. So we will do it again. Here, we just replace this because I've already arranged it. I'll remove this one also over here like this. So now our program is ready. We will connect core key.